Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Everyone just bow your heads where you have Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we come, Father, and say thank you. Thank you for the day that the Lord has made. We all shall rejoice and be glad in it. And as we come today, Father God, we come with thanksgiving in our heart and a praise upon our tongue. Knowing that, Father God, whatever we ask, Father God, in your name, Father God, you shall reward unto, our, unto us. And for that, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for a new beginning, Father God. We pray that you continue to bless the pastor and all the members that are here today, Father God. Even the ones that are on their way, Father God. We come to hear the word today, Father God. Because you said everything else is going to pass away, but your word shall remain, Father God. And Lord, we just want to thank you right now, Father God, for giving us the guidance and the understanding and the wisdom of your word, Father God, that we continue to run on and know what the end's going to be. And Lord, we just want to thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue to have your way in our life. Continue to mold us and make us into what you would have us to be, Father God. Not our will, Lord, but thy will be done. We ask all these blessings right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 How many of y'all know that God is amazing? Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord.
God for his amazingness. And we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. We bless God today. If you'll give me a few moments. Hallelujah. That thing will get to you if you feel it right. <laughs> when you think about the amazingness of God, it'll get to you. He is amazing. He's so amazing. Let's give God a hand clap of praise, please.
sisters, we look to our text today where the Apostle Paul has fully explained the purpose of his letter to the Church of Romans. This letter was not written to people who were ungodly. They were written to Christians. He is to comfort them, to remind them of the reason for their living. Oh, it may get rough, my brothers and sisters. It may get tough, but there is victory in Jesus. Anybody know there's victory in Jesus? So I said, nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to what? For those who are the sons of God, you shall be renewed, you shall be revived. For God has a master plan, y'all. Restoration has finally come. Your breakthrough is on the way. The clouds are rolling on and the sun is about to shine. Your weeping, it only endures for a night. It shall turn to laughing. Your blessing is on the way. It ain't over till God says it's over. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. You are a royal priesthood. You're a city that sitteth upon a hill. You're above and not beneath. Chapter 8 of Romans reminds us all that no matter what the world may say, we are indeed overcomers. My brothers and sisters, we are overcomers. We are overcomers. We are And then he died. 
shame. But he did it just for you and I. Amen, somebody. And that while we were yet sinners, tow up from the flow of I know some of y'all been saved all your life, so I ain't talking to you. But those of us who done messed up a time or two, amen, somebody. We know that Jesus Christ died so that we may live. Because he suffered. The Bible says we too must suffer. But don't worry about that. For Paul didn't leave it right there. Because in verse 18, Paul says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In other words, my brothers and sisters, you live your story to receive God's glory. Amen. 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 What is that glory? The glory John told us about in Revelations chapter 21 when John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. He said, for the first heaven and the first earth, it were passed away. And there was no more sea. But John then said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. My brothers and sisters, you don't know by now, and we've heard this many, many times before, but there is going to come a time where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to crack the sky, and he's going to come down, and it's not going to be to help you to understand that you got to get saved, because that's the time that we're in now, but the next time he comes down, it's for judgment. Yeah. Here comes the bride, y'all. The bridegroom is coming. In the moment, twinkling of an eye, he comes. So I want you to know one thing. I need you to live your story. I can't live your story. We all have a story. We all have a path that God has given us. A path that we've already taken. But I want you to remember one thing that God wants to tell us on today. That is, if you're ready, or if you know that you want to see God's glory, live your story. Live the story that God has ordained for you. Many of us have callings on our lives. I don't know your call, but you have one. God said, I knew you while you were yet in your mother's womb. I knew you. I knew the, the plans for you. Amen. Amen. And God said, whatever you're calling me, I want you to remember me. Put God first. Live your story. And then receive your glory. Amen. 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 We're standing in the building. Come on, let's give God a hand up of praise.